because they've been available on one or two imports, we've changed a couple of the versions slightly. There's a different version of Ask. There's a, a different version of You Just Haven't Earned It Yet, Baby. And there's oh. one or two things that the U.S. just hasn't seen before. This night is off my eyes, Sheila, take a bow. Mm -hmm. uh, Shop the Dudes of the World. And, I mean, I know that radio has been playing one or two of these tracks, but as of yet, they've been unavailable on record. Mm -hmm. So this is an exclusively American release. Yeah. Um, and we're really, really pleased with the way it's been accepted. And uh, it's good. It's, it's not kind of, it's not so much a retrospect, but it's just a lot of things that slip through the net on mm -hmm. the uh, import side of things. Yeah, well, Ben, as prolific as you, it's it's nice to have something like this because I guess a few of those things will, like you said, become obsolete, just sort of get lost. You, you come out with so much material. Yeah, well, so we like to, um, when we put out a single, we do like to put out a lot of singles and things that A sides that aren't even on albums, um, but definitely the B sides, mm -hmm. which has never been heard before, things like Half a Person, mm -hmm. London, um, and, and Golden Lights, and so on. They, these are all things that. Um, we put out on B-sides and extra tracks because we like to do something new on the B-side and on the extra track. We, yeah. just, we like to write a new song and uh, because that's what we do, you know, I think that there's a lot more room in, in the, the new music scene for new songs. Oh, I seem to put out a single and the B-side is a remix of the A-side mm. and there's 12 inches, got two more mixes on it. Mm -hmm. When, I mean, what musicians are supposed to do are write and make records and that's what we do. I mean, if anything, we're criticised because we make things difficult for ourselves commercially because we release too many records. <laughs> For instance, right now, what, well, what we've just done is just finished a new album, which... Um, oh, great. Oh, yeah, we, we finished that probably about a month ago in England, and that's finished and mixed and done. Uh, so what's happening with the live situation is we're waiting to uh, to maybe get get this record out and tour with the Loud, Loud and Bombs and the new material as well, because the group just want to play all new stuff, you know? Yeah. So, um, so when will that nice come... Dilemma. When when will that come out? Do you think? Well, pro realistically, probably September. Okay. And, and the group are really um, raring to go and raring to play, but we, we're so into playing some new stuff, which is always the way. Yeah, I mean, sure. On the last tour, we all, we put in a couple of new songs that we were writing at the time, and we started off on a, a couple of gigs with Panic, which no one at that time had heard. But it's mm -hmm. essential for the band to play things that really get us off. Mm-hmm. So um, we're looking forward to coming over with some of that new stuff. So will we see some of this before the album actually comes out and in the form of singles? And, and I should think so, yeah. I should, I, in a live sense, I should think so, yeah. Uh, let me remind anybody that just tuned in, Johnny Marr from The Smiths live on the air at LIR 92.7. What's the album called? Strange Ways, Here We Come. I'm writing this down. <laughs> strange yeah. Ways, Here We Come. Yeah, Strange Ways is one word. It's, um, strange Ways is a, a, a big, horrible, daunting prison in... Manchester. Oh. And if you go anywhere in Manchester, you, you have to travel in the shadow of strange ways. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's kind of a an issue closer to our hearts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that uh, is there a song called Strange Ways Here We Come or that's just the title? No, yeah, there isn't. <laughs> there isn't yet, but it's such a good title. I think you should do something. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, you're talking about uh, uh, songwriters and what songwriters should do and all. A an interesting question I I I'd like to ask, if you wouldn't mind. How do you and Morrissey work. You write the music and he writes the lyrics. Do you work together? Does he come to you with lyrics? Do you go to him with music? Well, occasionally that, that happens. And the very, very first couple of songs we, we'd ever written, man, we, we met and Morrissey gave me a whole batch of words and I went off and it was really, really easy to write um, because it's just on paper the imagery is so vivid mm -hmm. uh, and um, distinctive that, and there's always a really good subject matter that um, it, it's really quite easy to get some musical ideas but normally the way it goes is um, I do a, a demo kind of thing uh, maybe a few overdubs in the drum machine or whatever and I give him a cassette and right? Morrissey does his words which normally don't take too long and then we could go back in the studio or in the rehearsal room and then we sort of bang it into shape around the voice really and sort of change it around mm -hmm. so it's very much a 50-50 kind of black and white situation yeah. occasionally I've written songs around the words um, like Rush Young Ruffians from the Meets and Murder album was done that way. And then um, other times, normally actually when we're on tour over here, we've written songs together. Uh, Heaven Knows I'm Just Now was written in New York. Please, Please uh, was written in New York. You just haven't earned it yet, baby, it was written in Washington. Uh, and they were all songs that we were both sat in the same room and both put them down together. Mm -hmm. So, But normally I, I give him a tape of the song and he does his thing and then we bash it into shape. Mm -hmm. any, any theories as to why? The Smiths now are, are the band that people just go wild for. What is it about you that's different from all the other groups? 
Well, what is it that touches people? Well, <laughs> well, for being a, a boring interview, I mean, I, I really think that's something I try not to think about too much. Because, mm -hmm. um, if, if that situation exists, then that's wonderful, and that's what we, we try and do. But I don't try and tap into that too much. I try and stay, um, keep, stay pretty natural. I try and work instinctively, and uh, I do know that we, we kind of touch people. Uh, one thing is lyrically, um, Morris is very, um, is very opinionated and very profound, and um, he does write a lot from the heart. Mm -hmm. and his experiences are uh, a lot of people can probably relate to those things. Mm -hmm. um, and musically, we're um, sort of steeped in the great rock and roll tradition. So, uh, you know, the big things like Bo Diddley and Chuck Berries and so on. And um, I think people can just relate to that straight away because they're in uh, things that they like traditionally. That they're not in a group who are just trying to be smart ass for the sake of it. Yeah. Thing. Um, so there, there are lots of reasons, but I try not to think about it too much. <laughs> just thought I'd give it a try, yes. Well, I'd be one for this time in the morning. <laughs> oh, what time is it there? Wait a minute. Uh, well, it's ten quarter to three, but it's morning for me. <laughs> it's morning for you. Well, you know, um, this this uh, package, Louder Than Bombs, double record set, on one one uh, one CD, for those of you that have the CD, which I have right here in my hand, um, you know, we've played a lot of the imports. Uh, every import that comes out, we play it immediately if it's got the Smith's name on it. And um, But this is a really nice comprehensive package to have. Yeah, it, is. it does cover all the bases that have been completely um, unseen in America. It just um, kind of tidies things up for us. Because, well, in the, we do use quite a lot of numbers from that album in the set. And, uh, it's nice for people to get thoroughly familiar with them. Mm -hmm. but there are a couple of tracks which have never come out full stop. I'm um, like, this night's off my eyes, and um, you just haven't earned it yet, baby. Mm -hmm. Which we wrote and um, we recorded, and then when the album, the idea for the album came out, we thought it'd be kind of nice to uh, pass some stuff that just haven't been out full stop, you know. Wow, it's funny. You know, I'm just looking at the uh, at the song line up here, and I didn't even realize we have a thing here called the Screamer of the Week competition, where um, the WLIR listeners, I don't know if you know about it, call and vote for their favorite new song of the week. Oh yeah. And the first seven tracks on Louder Than Bombs have been Screamers. Is, <laughs> is it really so strange? Sheila, take a bow. Shoplifters, Sweet and Tender Hooligan, Half a Person, London, Panic. I'm looking down here to see if this ask was a Screamer. Well, that ask encouraged you know all this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, encouraging is right. Oh, it's really been so great to talk to you.